Sweden was recognized worldwide as a very wealthy, developed country with an excellent quality of life and, above all, a very peaceful country. It was even among the 10 safest countries in the world. However, in recent years, Sweden has had one of the highest rates of gun deaths in all of Europe. In addition, hospital waiting times are among the worst in Europe and the quality of education has declined across the board. But without a doubt, what worries Swedes most is the issue of crime and violence. In fact, last September, the situation reached the point that Sweden is preparing to deploy its armed forces to deal with the wave of violence across the country. Swedish Prime Minister Ulf Kristersson said, Sweden has never seen anything like this before. No other country in Europe is seeing anything like this. The whole situation is driven by gang turf wars, personal vendettas, and a large pool of available youth. Most of them from immigrant communities arriving from other countries in Africa and the Middle East, such as Syria, Iraq, Iran, and Somalia. In fact, the leader of one of the largest gangs is Rala Majid, who arrived in Sweden as a newborn in 1986 after his parents fled Iraq. So the questions are, why is the idea of multiculturalism destroying Sweden, and why in other rich countries is immigration successful, but in Sweden it failed? Before World War II, Sweden was a linguistically and culturally homogeneous country. From 1871 to 1940, the average number of immigrants was only 6,000 per year, and most of them came from Germany, Denmark, and Norway. However, in recent decades the idea of multiculturalism entered the political mainstream in Sweden and it began to receive a large number of refugees from outside Europe, making it one of the countries that received the most non-European immigrants in relation to its population. The proportion of immigrants of non-European origin increased from 2% to 15% from 1985 to 2015. Due to this rapid immigration, Sweden had a population growth of more than 1% per year between 2015 and 2019, well above normal levels for industrialized countries. This at first glance seems a very positive thing, as most European countries are feeling the effects of their aging population. On the one hand, because there are fewer people of working age, which means that fewer and fewer workers have to support more and more pensioners. And on the other hand, the aging of the population means that more people are demanding more complex and expensive health services and treatments. So attracting immigrants is one of the strategies used by developed countries to compensate for their aging populations. However, this strategy did not work in Sweden because many of the working age immigrants simply do not work. In other words, since Sweden made the transition from an immigration based on attracting workers to an immigration based on refugees from very different cultures, Integration into the labor market is complicated and they end up being excluded and dependent on state assistance. In the past, the integration of immigrants into the Swedish labor market was not a problem because most of the immigrants came from linguistically and culturally close countries and because most of the jobs were simple and characterized by well-defined and repetitive tasks. Unlike today's labor market, which makes higher demands on education, language skills and work experience, Anyway, the fact is that immigrants in the past had a high employment rate, while today most immigrants have difficulties integrating into Swedish society and finding a job. In 2015, the employment rate of people aged 20 to 64 was 82.9% for those born in Sweden, while for those born outside Europe, it was 53.6%. This ultimately translates into a good percentage of immigrants or refugees who are at risk of ending up in a state of long-term exclusion. And when a percentage of immigrants cannot integrate into society or the labor market, either because of language, educational level or culture, that is when gangs begin to form in communities, either to be part of a social group or to earn money. Therefore, it is not strange that criminal gangs have a very easy job recruiting young marginalized immigrants, which ended up increasing crime and violence in Sweden, since most of the crimes and murders occur among immigrant communities. Even former Swedish Prime Minister Magdalena Andersson stated in 2022 that segregation has been allowed to go so far that we have parallel societies in Sweden. We live in the same country, but in completely different realities. We will have to reassess our previous truths and make tough decisions. So massive immigration has imposed high costs on Sweden, not only socially but in economic terms. The Central Bank of Sweden calculated that the massive influx of immigrants in 2015 
the year the country took in 163,000 refugees, led to a reduction in GDP per capita of 1.7% and an increase in unemployment of 2.2 percentage points. So, as we can see, Sweden's desire to be inclusive and multicultural, receiving immigrants from Africa and the Middle East, put an end to the social cohesion and pacifism that characterize Sweden. One might think that the number of refugees arriving in Sweden is mainly due to external factors. However, a country with Sweden's isolated geographical position and two neighbors like Finland and Norway has great control over the number of refugees arriving. So the number of asylum seekers in Sweden depends mainly on the political decision to relax protection and border control. In addition, Sweden is not required to grant refugees permanent residence, but often does so for humanitarian reasons. There are other countries such as Greece, Italy, Spain, or the United States that do have difficulty controlling their borders. But in the case of Sweden, whether it wants to receive more or fewer immigrants is mainly a political question. On the contrary, there are other countries like Australia and Canada that also accept tens of thousands of immigrants a year, but it is an immigration based on employment and labor market needs. In these countries, immigration is relatively more successful because in order to obtain permanent residency, the immigrant must go through a process that can take years. For example, those who arrive as students must pay for their education and purchase private health insurance. And to apply for permanent residency, they must demonstrate that they speak the language and have the experience and qualifications necessary to formally enter the labor market. In this way, the contribution that immigrants make to the country's progress is more visible. On the contrary, an immigration policy that grants citizenship to a large number of low-skilled immigrants ends up simply creating beneficiaries of a welfare program. In other words, a rich country like Sweden, with 10 million inhabitants and generous state benefits in a world of billions of poor people, cannot have unrestricted immigration. Otherwise, it would be creating incentives to attract immigrants who are more motivated by state benefits than by a job. Milton Friedman, Nobel economics winner, said that a country cannot have free immigration and at the same time, a state that promises every resident a certain minimum level of income, regardless of whether they work or not. The current Swedish government, seeing that most crime is occurring among immigrants and that totally marginalized communities are being created, is implementing a series of policies aimed at tightening the borders and minimizing the number of refugees allowed by the European Union. However, of Sweden's 10 million inhabitants, 2 million were born abroad. And of these 2 million, the largest number come from Syria, with almost 200,000, followed by Iraq with 146,000. And the fact that they are already Swedish citizens means that they can now vote. And that access to the ballot box empowers them to vote in the future for policies that benefit their immigrant communities. So, no matter how restrictive the current policies are to accept fewer immigrants, Sweden will have to bear the consequences of implementing inclusive policies for so many years. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.